Shane, tell me about your journey in motorsport, where it began. Take me back to Tasmania when you were a young boy. Yeah, I, well, I've kind of been around it most of my life. Um, my dad got into racing early and I was lucky enough that he took me to a trip to Victoria to um, Calder Park where he t test drove a couple of race cars. And after the test, he put me in what they call the dicky seat back then, which is not really a seat. It's just a ba basically you, you're on the floor and you hang on. Mm -hmm. And took me out for a lap and uh, driving down the back straight there, my goggles blew off. Um, the wind got up underneath my eyes, I had tears rolling down my face, and then he came in and he said, what do you think of that? I thought it was the most amazing thing that I'd ever done. Early, early days, I was, I was right into it. I guess that's the beauty of motorsport, isn't it? It's a shared experience. So many of our fans come to races together as a family and that's how you got the bug. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I remember I was lucky enough that Dad took me to Longford when all the great Formula One drivers are there and uh, I got the signatures from those great drivers and it was amazing you know, to, be, to see them, how cool they were, right? And, uh, and then, yeah, just being with my dad, um, it's a family type atmosphere. We're always at racetracks with his friends, preparing cars, you know, just being around the sport. Give us a little bit of background about how you first came to supercars and how you've moved through the ranks. Yeah, well, when I, when I was young, I wanted to get into racing myself and Dad helped me do that. Um, he bought, uh, bought a Formula 3 car for me and you know, I was very young back then, like 16 and a half, 17. I was a mechanic. Yep. Um, you know, you want, you want to sort of be a race driver. You know, unfortunately, I had a lot of ambition and not, a, not enough talent, so <laughs> it was just timing, right? Um, I was into motor racing. Bernie was actually working for the company, um, which is our current engineering company, IEDM. Back then it was Weather and How. And uh, John Howe offered me a job. He said, um, we're, gonna, we're doing this thing. And I was civil engineers. He said, we've got this, this uh, new, new job. You, you could be right up your alley, which was the IndyCar and I went into construction management and, and managed that side of the business. Yeah, so I was brought in to um, start the promoting arm of supercars, because um, back then we didn't promote any events, they were all sanctioned events, and uh, so he, they brought me in to, to do that. Uh, the ARDC were, were the previous promoters, so we took that over and um, have managed that. It then sort of morphed into us managing about 10 rounds of the championship, so. Mm. Tell me about how the business has evolved since you first came on board. Yeah, well back then there was, you know, there was very few people. It was a small, it was a small business. You know, the, the whole business has grown at, a, at an enormous rate. Um, probably one of the most exciting times was really the street, ra development, developing the street races. We were on a massive growth spurt then, you know, and delivering Sydney Olympic Park, um, Townsville basically all within one year. A very exciting times. Having been so loyal and so committed to the business for two decades, what does it mean to you to become CEO? It, it, it means a lot to me. I mean, I've, it's, my, it's my life. So I've put everything in it to get to this point. The championship is everything to me. I believe that we are the number one touring car category in the world and to be at the helm of that with the support that I have from everybody in the industry, um, it be teams, be it, you know, staff um, and, and fans. So, you know, I'm really uh, looking forward to, you know, the journey ahead. So what does that look like? Can you give us a snapshot of what your vision is for the future of the sport? All the tools are there um, and we just need to maximise it. We need to, you know, increase our reach. We've got an amazing fan base, so we want, we want to deliver for those fans and, and that's what we're here for. So it's really sort of getting back to the levels we were, you know, bringing the entertainment um, to, the, to the fans and really lifting their experience, I think, at the end of the day. So is international expansion on the cards then for supercars? I think we have to be very chosen where we run and, and the number of races that you do internationally. So it's, it's, it's not a cheap exercise. Um, but yeah, we're, we're in some discussions now with the opportunities there, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. So Shane, as we look to the future, what are the most important things for you? What's at the top of your checklist? Oh, it's easy. It's fans. 
impressing the fans and getting to the experience to the fans and making fans happy, um, that's number one. The intensity of the sport is something special and, that, and with that comes drama and, and this is what you know, the fans want to see. We've got all the ingredients there, we just put it together and then really impress our fans, that's what we're after.